starts to slow down. They just gave up an exit. He could have easily pulled off here, but is choosing not to. But if they, I suspect that if he pulls over here and is even close to stopping, officers will move in at a rapid pace here to try to prevent him from getting back on the road and um, getting back into a chase scene here. Well, and certainly, Gary, the hope is that this person will decide to pull over and uh, stop and, and, and end this peacefully. And kind of went almost down the exit ramp. He's heading down that ramp. But uh, looks like he's about to change his mind and uh, pull back on the highway, much to the frustration, I'm sure, of these police officers. There is no place at this point. You can see the folks on the side of the road. Again, he's stopping, starting, stopping, starting. Uh, it's obvious he's not going to outrun them, but yet he continues to do this and refuses to give up. So there's something something a little off here in terms of uh, what the plan is here. I can tilt up here and show you a little bit, but uh, there is no other offer on here for quite some time. Uh, I'm looking at that so far, right? Okay, I'm giving you a tight shot here. I'll zoom in here a second, and you'll see that um, this person has a cell phone. Uh, he appears to be talking on his cell phone. He's looking out the window, possibly uh, at us, at the attraction, and just weaving. We don't see anybody in either the front seat or the back seat, uh, but it appears to be an empty vehicle. But a, a very, very casual, acting very casual as he uh, one hand drives with one hand and, and visits on a cell phone with somebody uh, on the other hand. And uh, a very unusual shot here of being able to actually look inside this car and try and figure out what what is going on us possibly and or the traffic on the side right behind him his hazards are on so this camera shot is is headed east as he comes is headed west actually as he comes east toward our camera and that's that's what that looks like a you blocked i30 nobody is on this road except for that one motorist and the, and the police officers who are following. Now we've got sound. So this is what people are hearing coming toward them, which would explain why so many folks were getting out of their cars mm. to look, because they could hear this. And you see that flat tire there? Yeah, The you right can see it passenger now. tire is flat, so, which is why this person has been driving at speeds of, uh, you know, around 10 miles per hour for such a long time. Something else to take into, into consideration is that's what he is hearing as well. Mm -hmm. He's been listening to those sirens the entire mm -hmm. time. Wow. And I can tell you from riding inside a squad car with the sirens going, it'll wear you down. It's loud. In addition to speakers, you, we understand the police have been speaking to this person through loudspeakers. And he's trying to carry on a telephone conversation as well. Right. So this is eastbound, oh, this is uh, East Chase, the East Chase overpass we just passed underneath on eastbound I-30. You saw the news media there watching this as it goes by and right now we're getting very close to uh, Arlington. Arlington police are going to be standing by doing the same things we're seeing police do in Fort Worth do as far as trying to clear people off those roads. And as, as we... Go ahead. Uh, he's just, uh, you'll see here on your screen here, just a, a second, he's going to pop up on the grass here, uh, change his mind at the last minute, and get off again back on an exit. Uh, I, I'm a little bit ahead of you only because we're on a delay, so I apologize for that. But uh, you'll see him, he's, he's uh, changing his mind at the last minute, cutting across grass, cutting through an intersection. There were some officers that looked like they were blocking him off. Uh, not allowing him to go further on 30, and I believe that's what may have prompted him to do that at the last minute. And now we're running along the access road of I-30, approaching, I believe, uh, well, we're about a mile from Six Flags, uh, into a parking lot. We'll uh, see him into a parking lot here. Uh, officers, one, two, three, four, five, six officers speeding up here, and uh, he's going to turn left into this parking lot. Uh, a lot of officers speeding up, trying to contain this. But uh, they're having a problem here, scooting through this, this traffic. Luckily, not a lot of folks in this parking lot. He's yeah. going to turn, turn here and then come back out. And it appears he's going to get back on a north-south road. 
but not sure what that is. Yeah, Gary, let, 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 let me, uh, you're, you're on, uh, obviously you're seeing this live. We're on a bit of a delay. Let, it, let us see if we can talk this through here. Now headed southbound, of course, make a left turn here. Six. Relatively close uh, right now, turning all the way around, so he's going back Six. to the north. Uh, right now. White four-door car has been leading police uh, on this chase. They've been on I-30 for, for two hours. Here they are now in a residential part of Arlington. You see he just turned left into some kind of, uh, we can assume it's some kind of open parking lot. Mm -hmm. and uh, he's Okay, this is the old TxDOT depot off of I-30. Um, and you see him just pick up speed there and rush through. And again, this is still on a flat tire. That's what we see him doing right there on a flat Tire, and he's driving okay. over the median here and back onto Collins and around the traffic. Some uh, very dangerous maneuvers here uh, as we continue to watch this driver flee police. So he is right at I 30 in Collins. Up until now, this chase has, hasn't been that dramatic. He's been leading police going maybe 10. Maybe five miles per hour on the highway, but then a short time ago he gets off the highway. He's now in Arlington, and now he's driving erratically through city streets. We've seen him go through neighborhoods. He's mm -hmm. going in and out, in between cars. Uh, he's whizzed by children walking uh, on the sidewalk. He has no regard for uh, for any traffic. And there you see him driving on the. This is just so you know where we are. This is the road to Six Flags that he's about to get on right now. So this is North Arlington. The westbound toward Cooper. On the right hand side should be some kind of a golf course. Uh oh. Well, now he's moved off of the main road, so this should be interesting to see. Gary, uh, you can see where he's headed. I don't know what is through there. Looks like he's trying to get. Uh this, this is an empty parking lot, a construction strip zone. Officers are moving in really soon. They really wanted to catch him inside there, but now uh, he's making his way back to the road, and he actually uh, will probably get out of this. Um, of this parking area and back onto the road again, which uh, is really disappointing because it's uh, traffic is picking up, the speed is picking up, yeah. and uh, he's southbound it, now on, on uh, that. That would be southbound on Collins, uh, it, Gary. If I'm correct, what you'll see up ahead of him on the left-hand side, a few blocks down, should be um, should, should be the, the stadium. Uh, and on the right hand side, of course, all kinds of traffic. But again, this is the busiest tra this is the busiest area in terms of retail in ter for Arlington, I think in North Arlington, right, Gary? Yeah, it's very crowded here. Okay, you'll see them cutting up across the sidewalk over a restaurant. Uh, I'm speaking just a little bit ahead here, uh, but um, it is a very uh, very busy section of, of town, a lot of traffic, not a lot of pedestrian traffic, thankfully, but you'll see him cutting across here. Look at that, cutting across onto the streets. Again, trying to shorten his route and trying to lose these guys, but back out. Uh, now is going the wrong way down a street. Uh, this is just increased dramatically in danger. One way down what appears to be this is the ramp to get on to get off That's, on one of these yeah. streets here. It's one way, and he's going the wrong way. And uh, yeah, this here is, comes a. Go ahead, Gary. I think this is very dangerous. He's on, he's on the ramp to go the wrong way to the service road getting off of uh, getting off of 20. He may realize that, but he's going to have to turn around now. Well, there he goes. So he's getting on now, Gary. He's going to be going eastbound on, on 30. Is that correct? Yes, eastbound on 30. He almost got hit by that red car, but uh, now he's back on I-30 eastbound, picking up the speed yet again and uh, trying to get back on the highway, and he probably will be successful to that here just uh, in a couple of minutes. Yeah, he has found his way now to back onto the freeway. In just a second, he'll be going past there. What you'll see in coming up in just a couple of minutes, six flags will be on your right-hand side, uh, 360, uh, and then, of course, uh, headed after that, of course, into Grand 161, and then, of course, into Grand Prairie. Uh, but it uh, looks like he has managed to find his way uh, back onto the, the freeway. Police officers, of course, trying to, to catch up with him right now. Yeah, he's uh, actually lost quite a few of them. Uh, he's still got one or two behind him, but he lost a whole bunch of them. And, uh, but they're still got him in view, and obviously the helicopter does. And they're right next to him on the, the road. They're just waiting for that road to merge and uh, allow them to get right back on. But now they have the, the chore of breaking up this traffic again and keeping people away from, from this event. And that's, that, it's almost like they have to start all over again. And that, again, more strain on Fort Worth's resources. This is a very difficult situation for them. Yeah, yeah he's about to pass two major roads. Uh, 360 will be coming up in just a second. So 360 and I-30. He's on I-30 
eastbound headed toward Dallas. So that uh, where he is right there, that uh, I cannot remember the name of that road. Uh, but it's also a, a main exit, but ballpark way also coming up uh, relatively quickly. But after that will be 360, and then shortly after that will be, I think, uh, 161, if we're heading north on 161. But right now, again, on, on I-30, uh, looks like he's headed, on the, he'll headed to the east, uh, headed toward the Grand Prairie right now. Police officers uh, again behind him uh, in this pursuit that's been going on now since uh, since about 1:45 that we have been following all of this. So the best part of the of the uh, of the afternoon they've been following him. We initially heard that this was a simple traffic stop, but now we've learned based upon sources that Lawrence Akalik has uh, that this individual may have some extensive uh, involvement uh, with the justice system in terms of having gone to prison for 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 drugs. May also be a suspect in terms of being a drug dealer right now. Uh, and is trying to elude police because of the situation uh, that he's experienced in the past. Tanya Eiser joins us now. She's got some more information. Tanya, again, has extensive uh, background with regard to dealing with law enforcement. Go. I understand that uh, he's going to wreck out. Watch this picture as we come up. That's a police unit you see there. Let's see what happens as he pushes to the right. Well, there we go. There's the bumper. Yep, they're getting him stopped. That was a, that was a SWAT was vehicle. The yeah, you see four SWAT vehicle. on the, the side of it. The police using the SWAT vehicle. Looks like a person trying to they get out of the back right there. They call that a bearcat, apparently. Police officers coming out, both sides of them. Oh, sorry. Police officers coming out, both sides of him right now. Uh, some smoke coming from the, the the white car of the suspect. Officers trying to come into the to the inside. Again, this trace has come to a close. Asking him to get out, and it looks like he either cannot or will not. You see them poking at the window. They'll be coming around to the other side uh, and momentarily. This is a SWAT unit that's come around that's, pulled, that's brought this to a close. Police officers, again, there he is trying to crawl out the window right now. Police officers come around, grab him, pull him out of the vehicle, bringing him to the ground now. Car is shredding. It's, we just saw a piece fly off. There is a tactical vehicle. And it appears the tactical vehicle is, is executing a pit maneuver. They've put him into the wall. They've okay. stopped it. This vehicle this is, is stopped. Right at 30 and 360, Don. What's happening? Right now, they'll make a felony stop. They'll try and get him to get out of the car unless the tactical team removes him from the car. Okay, so now you see officers out, guns drawn, pointed right at the suspect. They don't know what he has in the car, they don't know if he's armed. And there you see them trying to get him to come out. They've, take, they've taken defi decisive action to stop this pursuit. They're trying to get him out of the vehicle at this point. He doesn't appear to be cooperating. I don't know if he's been disabled in this crash or if he's simply not cooperating. It looks like he's climbing out the window now. And he is obviously not going to get any further than... Where he's gone. So police have him on the ground. Um, and this is a very different team that had been following him. Uh, than Officers look like they're securing the situation. They don't seem to be concerned about anyone else being inside. They brought the suspect out of the vehicle. It has wrecked. Uh, so it looks like the officers are okay. The suspect now in custody. Police officers securing the scene. Tanya Eisner uh, joins me. Tanya, did you get a chance to see all that? Well, I having some difficult oh, I have, I'm watching it right now obviously they they use one of their SWAT vehicles to bring this thing to an end uh, talking to law enforcement folks what they're saying obviously this became a life safety issue to allow this continue and that's why they got the SWAT vehicle involved in, and ended this thing in the way that oh, and it looks uh, like the obviously we'll have more on the four o'clock into custody let's take a short break uh, news at four starts in just a moment <laughs> 